Having examined the various rules and regulations governing the entire financial system and financial market in Ghana, we will select the banking industry and look at the banking regulation itself, which is also one aspect of the financial markets in Ghana. These are the various laws that you may have to look at when it comes to the activities and operations of banks. There's a Contrast Act, Electronic Transaction Act, the Bank of Ghana Act, and then the Banking Act itself. We already know what a bank is. We also know, already know what the financial system, the banking system is. But what are the functions of the banking system itself, separate from the functions of the entire financial system? Now, the banking system is said to be at the heart of the financial system because of the peculiar function that it's, 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 it um, performs. It doesn't mean that the other industry in the financial system or the other entities and or do not perform essential functions but the banking system is really the core of the entire financial and therefore we'll look at what the banking system is about and then the functions of the banking system itself essentially the banking system is responsible for the location of resources through credit decision process and market pricing to the most efficient users so essentially they do the location of resources of course they put it together then they do the allocation of resources, particularly through the granting of credits and then some investment. And then also, they help set also market prices, again, to the most efficient users. They also provide a medium for receiving and paying for goods and services. And that is why when, when you went through the negotiable instruments, we look at checks, we look at other instruments that can also be issued. When a person intends to pay for goods or services, the person can either issue a check, which is a bill of instruments, and that check can then again be sent to the drawee, which is the paying bank for payment. So you find that the banks play essential roles when it comes to transactions in the economy, which again may cover payment for goods or services. They also ensure financial stability and stability of individual banks. So it's not just about the financial market itself. The very nature of their rule also ensure that the banks themselves are also, they remain stable and then also that they can operate to ensure that the entire financial system is efficient. So as part of their role and by the location of resources, they ensure financial stability the entire stability of the financial system itself. They also facilitate the reduction of financial crime. Again, remember that I also gave an example where the bank are also mandated by law to also report uh, by filing the suspicious transaction report to the financial intelligence agency. That is their responsibility. Not just banks, but other players in the industry are also mandated to do that. But by so doing, they facilitate the reduction of financial crime amongst others. They also help induce and retain market confidence. Again, if they perform their roles well and they ensure there's a stability in the entire financial system, essentially it will result in some confidence in the market, which would also in turn attract some investment and ensure that the economy remains stable. They also protect customers, investors, and depositors by the very role that they play they end up protecting customers. Because if you look at the duty of a bank, we observe that where a person delivers or presents a check, the duty of the bank to ensure that it's a proper person, the duty of the bank to ensure that the signatures are the appropriate signatures on the check before they pay. So essentially, by the very nature of their rule, they protect the interests of customers, investors, as well as depositors. The banks also, the banking system also sets and maintain standards that reflect international standards. Ghana, we are in the, uh, we, are, we are part of the entire global system. There are international standards, and then of course there are some local standards. But the nature of their rule, they also ensure and then attempt to meet certain international standards. You find that 
in the banking industry there are a lot of foreign banks as well and these foreign banks are also regulated by international rules international standards so by they meeting the international standards indirectly they set certain standards that are acceptable worldwide also in Ghana and they also ensure healthy competition what are some of the objects of banking regulation we've looked at the objectives of regulating the entire financial system what about banks themselves what are some of the objectives the objective of the banking regulation is to ensure financial stability promote and protect market integrity again protect consumers and also prevent unwise investments or reduce or eliminate the grant of bad loans Again, this arises out of the general objective of the financial regulation, but specifically for banks, this is why the, we have specific re regulations for banks alone. Who is a regulator for banks? Essentially, it is the central bank, which is the Bank of Ghana. They are responsible for regulating banks and the banking system in Ghana, and they do so through licensing, remember that when we started, I said that to be able to operate the banking industry, you must be a limited liability company, and therefore you become a corporate body, and then you must acquire a license from the Bank of Ghana. Before the central bank will issue a license to an entity to operate as a bank, they must have met certain capital and other compliance requirements. You don't just apply for it. In addition to the capital and compliance requirement, they also have technical requirements they also need to meet. They also have certain requirements on qualification and expertise, even for the officers and directors of the bank. So the toilet of things that a company may have to meet before a license is issued. So the and it's Bank of Ghana or the Central Bank that issues these licenses. They also extend prudential regulation. You talk about prudential regulation, which essentially is to help minimize or reduce risk when it comes to banking operations. So they extend some of these prudential regulations. Sometimes they have them in, have to just give it to them them to incorporate into their rules and regulations they also undertake on-site and off-site inspection examination i've also um, um, discussed what these are both the off-site and on-site off-site is where they sit in their office and do it on-site is where they move to the office premises of the various banks and inspect their books and transactions and then write reports on them and that will inform them of the decision whether to continue licensing such banks or to withhold or to revoke or cancel such licenses. They also have the powers of investigation where they can investigate complaints raised by other banks or customers or consumers. So they also have powers of investigation where, where a person files a complaint to the central bank, they can also investigate. And an example I think is a, is a DKM uh, issue, microfinance company in the Brown region for instance, where when a complaint was made, the Bank of Ghana taking over and they are investigating such issues. So you find that the central bank again has all these powers. Again, in addition to the powers of enforcement which we discussed earlier on, they have the power to also give directives and make regulations, which I've also mentioned, where they can send a directive, of course, in writing to the affected entities. Or they can make regulations in the form of notices. And I talked about regulatory notices. Even though they are not passed by parliament, they have the force of law. So notices that are usually issued by the central bank are regulated notices and they have the force of law and therefore they must be complied with. They also have the power to also design and produce guidelines for the people in the industry to follow. And they can also enforce that where a bank feels or refuses to comply with the guideline. Then they have the powers of enforcement. They have power to sanction for financial crime and part to compel cooperation and share information. State and examine the powers and processes by which the Bank of Ghana regulates banks in Ghana. We have also answered this question in this session. So this brings us to the end of our discussion. And please read find time and read some of these texts, look at the laws, examine them. And again, as I said earlier, when you are reading some of these textbooks, you need to read them alongside the laws of Ghana because some of them are written by foreigners and therefore you find certain 
references being made to foreign laws which may not be applicable to Ghana. So read them, but read them alongside the laws of Ghana.